to resume services to Antigua. Major development regarding LIAT employees. The anxious workers meet with their union. Anxiety for thousands of Caribbean students in U.S. universities amid a new policy from the Trump administration. And another major push by Caribbean leaders for reparations from former colonial powers. The ABS News at 7 begins now. The local evening news is brought to you by Nagico, local agents, Bryson's Insurance. Hello, good evening. Thank you so much for joining us for the evening news here on ABS, Antigua's most trusted name in news. My name is Garfield Burford. And I'm Alejandro Robinson. A special welcome to those of you joining us via Facebook Live. Well, we, we begin this evening with news that the tourism industry is set to receive a major boost as air travel begins to pick up pace. That's right, Alejandro. Now, Tourism Minister, the Honorable Charles Fernandez, made that announcement Tuesday morning while on Antigua Brabida today. ABS's Rakib Aparicio recaps his comments. Tourism Minister the Honorable Charles Max Fernandez says tourist air arrivals are expected to hit 50% of the yearly average by the end of 2020. COVID-19 brought the industry to a grinding halt earlier this year as countries closed their borders in an effort to curtail the spread of the virus. During this time, he says the yachting sector remained relatively unaffected. Yachting is one of the safest uh, aspects of tourism because invariably the yachts travel for in a, an inordinate amount of time to get here. So they have been self-quarantining. Now, he says, the country is beginning to see an uptick in air travel. Last month, American Airlines became the first international commercial flight to resume operations at VC Bird International Airport. JetBlue, he says, resumed operations on the 4th of July. In October, we also have a, a Saturday flight from New York, JFK, American Airlines. And in mid-December, we have a Charlotte flight coming uh, on, on uh, Saturdays. Also on the rise is intra-regional travel. We are working with the local hotel association to see how we can reintroduce the CARICOM rate to again um, encourage people within the region to come into the hotels. In a media release issued Tuesday, Caribbean Airlines says it has resumed operations in its Jamaica hub and is now offering daily flights between Kingston and New York. Services to Miami and Toronto are also expected to come back on stream this week. Minister Fernandez is also providing an update on when Caribbean Airlines will resume operations here in Antigua. Caribbean Airlines, the last discussion I had with them last week, have indicated that uh, by the end of uh, next week, they should have a flight into Antigua. Rakib Aparicio putting for ABS News. Now, meanwhile, Tourism Minister the Honorable Charles Max Fernandez is providing an update on the country's cruise tourism industry. The cruise operators are of the opinion that uh, next year is going to be a big year for them. They're going to be, of course, offering a lot of incentives. Minister Fernandez says while a slow start is expected, by the end of 2021, cruise arrivals are expected to return to normal. There are a whole bunch of rigid protocols that are going to be put in place, again, to ensure safety, because you just have one mistake and the whole industry collapses again. But uh, they are confident that uh, by October, you'll start to see some life coming back into it. Meanwhile, the tourism minister says the protocols implemented by the country in response to COVID-19 continue to be robust. I think it is fair to say that uh, we've done a great job thus far. Um, yes, we've had a number of cases that have come in, but that is something that we had anticipated and expected. The Ministry of Health has uh, been working very, very diligently to ensure, again, that we do whatever we can to uh, block whatever is coming in as much as possible. Minister Fernandez has also provided a further rationale for the policy change, which requires a negative PCR test for COVID-19 prior to boarding a flight to Antigua. He says the move is in line with regional and international standards, but insists stringent checks will still be conducted at the VC Bird International Airport. Now, visitors who do not wish to be subjected to the checks will not be granted entry. What we need to do is, after you get in, you still will have the other protocols, i.e. the temperature checks and so on. And if there's an elevated check, then you go to another 
uh, screening, which means we probably, we, not probably, we will have to do another test here. And if you don't want to do the other test, then you put on a flight and get back out kind of thing. Now on to Leah, because the future of the airline's workers continues to hang in the balance after it emerged in recent weeks that most of the major shareholder governments have moved to liquidate the Antigua-based airline. Antigua and Barbuda's government has objected to this move and wants a, or wants a reorganized airline, failing which it has vowed to start Liat 2020 Limited. The company employs hundreds of workers in Antigua and Barbuda, and their main bargaining agent is the Antigua and Barbuda Workers' Union. General Secretary David Messiah told our newsroom this afternoon that a closed-door meeting was held with the workers today. Now, Messiah did the meeting involved Prime Minister the Honorable Gaston Brown. Messiah did not wish to share details, noting that the airline's operations are diverse and involve various departments across the region. He says the union needs to involve everyone in their consultation process before any firm decision can be made on the options. Therefore, the union boss notes that the process of meeting with all the key stakeholders will continue. And staying with uh, the issue of travel, one Caribbean airline is positioning for the long haul in regional air travel as Liat faces an uncertain future. St. Vincent's Prime Minister, Dr. Ralph Gonzales, according to regional news reports, says new planes are being leased for its current fleet and flights could begin as soon as Sunday. Gonzales, who has responsibility for regional travel in CARICOM's quasi-cabinet or quasi-cabinet, says he has also received proposals from SVG Air and Caribbean Airlines. Caribbean Airlines, which flies internationally, has told the St. Vincent Prime Minister that it can take on 80% of the load Liat was carrying before the pandemic. The Vincentian Prime Minister's position does not exactly square with his Antiguan counterpart. Prime Minister the Honorable Gaston Brown is of the view that Liat should be remodeled so as to make it more attractive to new capital. Well, the relocation of homes to make way for the housing renewal project in Bubi Ali will continue in August. The overall project has been delayed with the advent of the COVID-19 pandemic. Coordinator for the Bubi Ali development project, Hyacinth Lewis, says four homes are on the agenda for relocation once work resumes. Two homes will be relocated to Bath Lodge, one to Bennett Street Villa, and the location of the fourth to be confirmed. The project has seen the successful removal of two homes to Bennett Street in Villa. Two homes were in the process of being relocated when work was halted by COVID-19. Well, more details this evening on a story we have been closely tracking. The Bulk Waste Cleanup Initiative is set to begin on the 15th of July. Kim Emanuel Baird has the update from General Manager of the National Solid Waste Management Authority, the NSWMA, Daryl Spencer. General Manager of the National Solid Waste Management Authority, Daryl Spencer, says the authority anticipates a six-week cleanup program after dividing the country into nine zones, including Barbuda. Spencer says the bulk waste cleanup will be immensely beneficial in the areas of public health and aesthetics. It should assist in mosquito control. It should assist in pollution control because you do, we do know that quite a bit of the bulk disposed um, carry some chemicals within them that can leach into the environment, can affect our water. Um, if in contact with humans and animals, it can be a problem too. The cleanup initiative will start in St. George's and St. Peter's on the 15th to the 19th of July, with City West and East to follow on the 20th and 23rd. And this will follow the same schedule as regular garbage collection days. Meanwhile, he has this suggestion for members of the public who hire disposal companies. Whenever you give a person a job, and usually that is the case, to dispose of the waste at Cook's, do not pay until they re return with the load ticket. That is your, your surety that this individual disposed in the, of the waste that the way it should be disposed of. Spencer then spoke of a new initiative to have organic waste separated from bulk waste. 
We are now working with the an inter, a regional corporation to set up a green waste site. Um, it's something that we're working on with the Ministry of Agriculture uh, because the green waste can be used as soil enhancer. Um, if we get um, fresh green waste, it can be used as animal fodder. It can be feed for animals. The general manager says the authority is working on getting the information out to the public to ensure everyone's cooperation, especially as everyone remains on alert during this hurricane season. Kim Emanuel Baird, reporting for ABS News. Thanks so much, Kim. Meanwhile, the National Solid Waste Management Authority will be introducing a collection fee in the St. John's Commercial District. In a release issued to the media today, the body says it has become increasingly difficult and unsustainable to provide waste collection services to commercial customers free of cost. Effective the 1st of August, therefore, businesses in the St. John's Commercial District will be paying between 5 EC dollars and 20 EC dollars, depending on the type and volume of waste generated by them. The fee will, be, will not apply to residential waste collections. Again, the fee will not apply to residential waste collections. And in cases where private entity haulers are already providing the waste collection service for businesses. So, a uh, word to the wise there, we'll certainly keep across this story as well. Mm -hmm. All right, Alejandro, so much to cover, of course, during this ABS Evening News. Of course, so much more still to come. We're covering Antigua and Barbuda and the world still to come in this newscast. Anxiety for thousands of Caribbean students in the United States in the wake of a policy move by the Trump administration. Of course, we'll tell you about that. And later in news from overseas, St. Lucia to lift curfew later this week. The government in Castries also explains its position regarding the holding of elections during the state of emergency. All that upcoming on the ABS Evening News on the air and online. Stay with us. At Najico, the things that matter to you matter to us. Like your boat when you're at sea and you get away from everything. Your home and the security of your daughter's things. And the car that you've had for too long. But after all these years, you just can't let go. At Najico, we're about much more than just insurance. We're about the big things and the small things that mean everything. As a new mom, there are moments of pride, joy, and doubt. Yes, doubt. Has he slept enough? Does she have everything that she needs? Will she be okay in the sun? These doubts come from love for the good of baby. Two servings of Nestum are full of all the goodness and naturalness of the cereals that your baby needs to blossom. That's one less thing to worry about. Nestum, it's all good, Mom. Learn more online with Nestle Baby and Me. <laughs> it's not easy getting rid of these types of greases every day. It's hard work. But if you really think about it, it's not really us doing the cleaning. At Total Import Supplies, we believe it's all about the product. Our extensive new line of ChemClean products are extremely concentrated, eco-friendly, effective, and guaranteed to make your life a whole lot easier. Whether you're cleaning at home, the office, or at industrial-type spaces, when it comes to food-based solvents, sanitizers, cleaners, floor care, commercial machines, and dispensers for laundry care, let the product do most of the work for you. Introducing the best brands in the cleaning business from ChemClean Limited. Available only from Total Import Supplies. A story now which has caused anxiety for thousands of tertiary students in the United States, including many from the Caribbean. The United States Immigration and Customs and Enforcement, ICE, has announced that international students pursuing degrees in the United States must leave the U.S or risk deportation if their universities switch to online-only courses. The move will affect thousands of foreign students, including those from the Caribbean who are attending universities in the United States or are participating in training programs. ICE indicated on its website on Monday that international students on non-immigrant F1 and M1 visas attending schools operating entirely online may not take a full online course load and remain in the United States. The U.S. Department of State will not issue visas to students enrolled in schools and or programs that are fully online for the fall semester. 
The Trump administration is suggesting that students currently enrolled in the U.S. consider other measures such as transferring to schools with in-person instruction. Much more to develop on that story. Well, vendors of the public market complex have pointed to significant loss in revenues in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic. They're pointing to several contributing factors, as we hear from ABS's Leo Norville. A look inside the public market on Tuesday. There's also vending taking place outside where some fruit and vegetable vendors offer their goods for sale. Those on the inside of the market tell us they often struggle to make a sale on some days. Though they were not willing to appear on camera, they told us about several challenges they are facing. They tell us there has been a sharp rise in the number of vendors in the city, as some people who have lost their jobs have turned to this area to earn a living. They also complain about the charge for vending from inside the market, especially at a time when they're losing sales to those outside. They tell us their sales have also been declining as increasing numbers of people engage in backyard gardening. They want the St. John's Development Corporation to quickly address these issues. I reached out to comment from City Manager Carolyn Parker and SJDC General Manager Craig White, but both declined to comment at this time. What I can tell you right now is that officials from the St. John's Development Corporation have been notified and investigations are ongoing. We do expect to have a response from officials in the upcoming days. Leon Norville reporting, ABS News. Thanks, then we'll expect to hear much more on that story. Now, people seeking free HIV testing and counseling services can do so now at the AIDS Secretariat office on Long Street, but there are some changes in the operations. The office had not been closed, but had stopped HIV testing for two months following the implementation of the curfew and social distancing protocols because, of course, of the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, during the period while HIV testing had been suspended, the office was refurbished to enforce all health and safety protocols to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Testing resumed on Monday of this week, that's yesterday, and is done from 8 in the morning to noon, Mondays to Fridays. Now, AIDS program manager Delcora Williams says all tests are now done by appointments with three clients scheduled every half an hour with 20 minutes for testing and 10 minutes for sanitizing after each test. ABS's Leo Norville will take a closer look at this developing story next week during the e evening news. Stick around for that. Well, of course, we're telling you about this other developing story as well. There has been another major forum as the region continues to push for reparations from former colonial powers. Barbados' Prime Minister Mia Motley has said Caribbean islands that were affected by actions of the transatlantic slave trade and need more than an apology. The Prime Minister was speaking during a regional virtual discussion from apology to action. That's what it was called. Caricom's call for reparatory justice. She believes that as a direct result of the aftermath of the slave trade and, colon and colonization, the region is now one of the most highly indebted places in the world. In the latter half of the second of the 20th century, persons like Richard B. Moore continued to make the plan by crying out for a plan of economic re rehabilitation with funds to it contributed to it by Britain, by France, by the Netherlands, and by the United States of America on the basis that significant sums of wealth had gone to people in those countries, families in those countries, and governments to be able to build out their countries. Therefore, she's calling for a plan for economic rehabilitation with funding coming from major countries that had taken significant sums of wealth from the region, those countries in Europe. Motley also notes that the discussion of reparations is not just about money. Our ability to be able to ask formally for the discussions and to contextualize that for us, reparations is not just simply about money, but it is also about justice and even even in the space that allows us to have the policy flexibility to be able to deal with a lot of what we're dealing with. Meanwhile, Vice Chancellor of the University of the West Indies and the Chairman of the CARICOM Reparations Commission, Sir Hilary Beckles, agreed with the views expressed by Prime Minister Motley. He used the occasion to call for a summit on reparations as phase two of the independence process. Keep across that one, Alejandra. It's a, it's a continuing kind of story that has many legs to it. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be a discussion we're going to be hearing for quite some time. Indeed. So uh, of course, uh, figures in the region would want to see action, not just continued talk, talk on this, but right. action as well from the European powers. That's right. All right. Well, it's time now for us to get on to some great news because 
There were welcome showers today and the clouds still low and dark signaling more showers are in the offing. That's right, Alejandra. So how much more rain can we expect? Uh, will it last, for example, for the rest of the night into tomorrow? Well, joining us to wet our appetites for the full weather report and forecast. So many puns we could talk about this. We could say get our feet wet, whatever mm -hmm. you want to say. Uh, joining us with a quick sneak peek of what we can expect during the full weather report and forecast is Leonard Josiah. Good evening, Leonard. And good evening to you, Garfield, and good evening to you, Antigua and Barbuda. Whether we like it or not, the clouds came in, and we certainly got a nice drenching in some places of Antigua and Barbuda today. But I'm going to be certainly teasing you and keeping you abreast to the changes. Tropical wave moving right across the island chain. Most of the clouds are still with us. Take a look at some of our rainfall totals. VC bird came in last and all these weather stations registered close to 10 millimeters of rainfall. Will we have more in store for you? Stay tuned to the night's weather report. I'll give you all the details with us. Sometimes 